So in the last couple videos, we've analyzed two level systems. Uh, so two level systems. And previously, we've analyzed them in the absence of some external perturbation. So we said if we had some energy level E1 and energy level E2, and maybe initially we had an electron in this state down here, uh, and we found out that the electron is just going to stay here. Uh, so it's just going to stay here uh, forever unless we apply some external electric field or some external photons. And so that's what we're going to do in this video. Uh, so we're going to apply some electric field or equivalently some photons and see what happens. And so to do that, we need to modify the Schrodinger equation. So we had initially that this was the Schrodinger equation. We've got some total wave function uh, as a function of x and time differentiating with re differentiated with respect to time uh, is equal to uh, our Hamiltonian times psi of x and t. But uh, now we're going to be replacing this Hamiltonian. So instead of just h, uh, it's going to be equal to h naught, which is our original. Uh, so this is our original Hamiltonian, and it's got all the same nice properties. Uh, so h naught times psi 1, for example, is equal to e1 times psi 1. So it, it stays exactly the same, uh, plus some what's called a perturbing Hamiltonian. And this is essentially just an additional potential energy. So an additional potential energy uh, that we're adding to the system. And this is actually a function both of space and time. So we can't deal with it quite as easily as we could this initial Hamiltonian, which was just a function of x. But we'll, we'll deal with it just the same. And we'll also figure out an analytical form for what uh, h prime is equal to. So h prime is actually equal to what? Um, we can use what we know about electric fields and charges to figure out what h prime is equal to. And so if you plug this in to the Schrodinger equation, uh, just as you did in, just as we did in the last video, um, and you also uh, cancel out all of the energy terms that pop out from H naught and from taking the derivative here. Um, so just to be explicit, again, remember that the total wave function, uh, so it's psi t of x and t, is just equal to some unknown coefficient c1. This is what we're trying to figure out, uh, times psi1 of x e to the minus i omega 1 t plus some other coefficient c2 uh, times psi 2 of x e to the minus i omega 2 t where omega 1 uh, is defined as e1 over h bar and similarly for omega 2 it's defined as e2 over h bar. So if you plug everything in you'll get something very similar to what we got last time uh, and so I'm going to draw the two right hand terms uh, just as they were before, just in white. So uh, this should be dc1 dt e to the minus i omega 1 t uh, times psi 1 plus the same thing for c2 e to the minus i omega 2 t times psi 2. Uh, but now these are, instead of being equal to 0, uh, these are equal to the terms in that are, uh, the, the terms involving our perturbing Hamiltonian. And that's just h prime uh, c1 times uh, e to the minus i omega 1 t psi 1 plus h prime c2 e to the minus i omega 2 t uh, psi 2. And so now we're, it looks like we're kind of stuck again uh, because we don't know what this h prime is. And so we have to figure out what it is or at least figure out some, some properties of it. Um, and so we can use... Uh, the knowledge that this h prime, uh, physically what this is corresponding to is our incoming electric field. And so that electric field uh, we know is probably going to be taking the form of a traveling wave. So if it's just a single frequency, which we're going to assume that it is, it's just cosine, it, it can be represented as a cosine of uh, kx minus or omega t. Actually, no, this shouldn't be x. This should actually be uh, some other variable, let's say kz minus omega t. You might ask why, uh, why this has to be z, and it doesn't have to be z, it could also be y. Um, but we want our electric field uh, to have some x component. So we want the, these wave functions we said were functions of x. 
And so we want our electric field to have some X component so that it interacts with the wave functions. That's, that's the only reason. Um, so if we've got this traveling wave that's coming into our system, uh, well, what does this system look like, which we've just drawn as, as energies? Um, well, physically, uh, the system is just some positively charged nucleus. It's an atom in a, in a semiconductor, roughly speaking, um, which is orbited by some electron. This is sort of a semi-classical picture, but it'll do for us. Um, and we know this distance, uh, which is the Bohr diameter, or twice the Bohr radius, is on the order of a fraction of a nanometer, so maybe 0.3 nanometers. And this is pretty much regardless of the material. It, it may be a little larger, maybe a little smaller. Um, but we know that the wavelength of our light uh, is usually on the order of hundreds of nanometers. So the wavelength of our light is much larger than the distance uh, over our, uh, the distances involved in the Schrodinger equation. So we're just going to evaluate this. Uh, we're going to evaluate this at z is, z is equal to zero. So we've got some incoming electric field, which really looks more like this because it's a really, really long wavelength. Um, so we're just going to say that uh, z is equal to zero or approximately um, the, uh, the electric field doesn't change too much over the distances that we've that we're dealing with and so this wavelength really should be much much larger so it might look it might really look something like this uh, as it goes through our atom so it's gonna change a little bit but uh, let's say not by much so our traveling wave sort of looks like uh, e naught times cosine of omega t so this is our electric field and we know that the potential uh, you can just get from an electric field, it's just minus uh, Q times the integral of the electric field with respect to space. And so if you actually take that integral, uh, you'll get that the potential is just equal to minus Q E naught times X times cosine of omega T. And so this, uh, this is our perturbing Hamiltonian H prime as a function of x and t. And really we can ignore the minus sign out front because it depends on where a wave starts and ends. So I'm just gonna take this to be the perturbing Hamiltonian. And so now we want to plug in uh, the, this value that we've just found. We want to plug in this perturbing Hamiltonian in here and just see what happens. Or so I guess both here and here. Uh, and then try to simplify this equation as much as possible so that it actually becomes tractable. Because <laughs> right now, look at how gross this is. Like, we've got the imaginary number, we've got some physical constants, time derivatives, complex exponentials, wave functions. Uh, it's, it's complicated. Uh, but we can just plug this in and then try to simplify things, and then hopefully we'll get a reasonable equation uh, at, the, uh, at the end. And so that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. So uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, just post them down below uh, and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. If you like the video, uh, please like, uh, hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, if you really liked it, you could become a patron uh, or a patron and the link for that is below in the description. Uh, and so thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.